The NBA, more than any other sports league, has been at the forefront of corporate social activism. After this summer's protests surrounding p- police brutality, the league pledged $300 million over the next decade to support economic growth in black communities. But one team is going even further. This week, the Atlanta Hawks announced a deal exclusively with black-owned banks to refinance their $35 million construction loan for the team's training facility. The first-of-its-kind deal will boost the lending capacity of these banks and allow them to better serve their communities. The banks will now be able to offer more financing for homes, small businesses, and even education. Earlier today, I got to speak with the Atlanta Hawks Chief Operating Officer, Thad Sheely, about the historic agreement. There are about 4,400 commercial banks in the United States, but only 18 of them are black owned and many of them don't have enough capital to compete with the major banks that we all know so well. Um, But you all still managed to strike this deal with the National Black Bank Foundation. Talk about the importance of that. Yes, thank you very much for having me on. Um, The National Black Bank Foundation is a brand new foundation uh, founded by Ashley Bell and uh, their general counsel. And uh, and they really, their mission is really to make sure that the 18 black banks that we have left in this country that serve such a critical function to local community, that they survive for the next 50 years. Uh, In 1976, there were about 50 of these banks that were in existence, and now we're down to 18. Um, And part of the problem is that they don't necessarily have access to the same credit pool, right, and the same loans and the same types of facilities that 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 we that we are now in the process of putting this transaction together. Um and so we think it's important to to support the National Black Bank Foundation. Yeah, it, it, there's so much history involved with this, and as you said, uh, they're down to such a, a low number, starting starting out at 50. The average white family, and this is all related, the average white family has about eight times the wealth of the average black family, and that has a lot to do with the way black people have been historically left out of the American banking system writ large. Are you hopeful that a deal like this one could change that in the future? Look, we want to do our small part, um, you know, as a, to, to help support the black bank. Uh, we recognize that um, there's systemic issues and systemic racism that uh, that, that impact, uh, you know, black families and black lives. Um, uh, we want to do uh, our, our small part as a part of the community to uh, to make sure that these black banks survive. Um, but but I do think it's important that, to note that um, as much as you know, this is such an important. Uh, level of support for black banks. But from our perspective, it's also good business, right? These black banks were able to offer a competitive loan um, to us on competitive terms. Um, and so this this very much is something that um, it's good business. You got to go look for it. And that's what the National Black Bank Foundation is mm-hmm. all about, making sure that the companies like our own can get connected to black banks, but that um, this is good business. That's such a good point, because I think oftentimes if somebody came across this headline, they would think that um, you were you were only doing it for the sort of symbolic and historic importance, as opposed to also it being a good business decision. Um, And you're not the first NBA team to do this. You're the first major sports team, period, to strike a deal exclusively with black banks. Are you hopeful that other teams and other sports leagues um, will follow suit? This seems like a a pretty cool precedent to to start, and I hope it becomes a trend. Uh, Yeah, it's one of those things that in retrospect, uh, why hasn't it happened? Um, And uh, and where we can lead the way and we can put our principles into action, um, whether we're the first or or whether we're one of many, I, I think it matters less that um, that it happens, and it happens more frequently uh, across the NBA and across sports and across all business. Okay, I'm going to get a little technical for a second. The amount of money invested into a bank controls how much money that bank is then li- able to lend to other people. With that in mind, uh, tell me what this $35 million deal with black banks will mean for those communities in particular. Right. So. Um, you're talking about the tier one capital for banks. And so in order for banks to loan out money, they have to have enough assets under management, and then they have to generate fees through which they can also lend against. 
Um, and so this generates fee income. We pay interest. We pay uh, we pay standard fees. We got a very good interest rate, uh, which we're proud of from a business perspective. Um, and then those dollars can go, and they have a multiplier effect, a multiplier effect in the bank itself. And then when those banks go to loans for small businesses uh, and entrepreneurs in black communities, right, that that has its own compounding effect. Um, and so, um, so every dollar invested with a black bank that they can generate fees on, that they can loan out, helps to support black businesses across the country. It's so important. The Hawks have been very consistent uh, in social in the social activism space. In October, the team invested forty million dollars in Atlanta, five million of which went to the largest nonprofit center for Black entrepreneurs in the nation. So critically important. You even turned your arena into a huge voting location, which turned out to be pretty important in the state of Georgia in that election. Can you speak uh, on the importance of? going beyond making just a statement uh, or putting a slogan on the back of a jersey and actually putting your money where your mouth is? Um, well, thank you for that. I mean, it's been so proud to be part of, of this organization and uh, really sort of, you know, putting our money where our mouth is and, and taking actions. And that, and that starts at the top. And that starts with, with Tony Ressler and his $50 million commitment, uh, $40 million commitment, I apologize, to, uh, to, to, to black economic empowerment in specifically in Atlanta, um, that those are the types of things that we think uh, make an impact. Um, when Tony first uh, became governor of the team, he was very clear that um, this is a community asset. Um, and it's a community asset, not just because uh, it says Atlanta, all right, on the on our jersey, um, but because of the kind of impact that the Atlanta Hawks can make. And we take that seriously, and um, it's very exciting. And 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 Coach Pierce, who I who I see up there, has been a real leading light for change uh, amongst the the NBA Coaches Association and the NBA Foundation. Um, you know, we're we're not the only ones that um, that's doing great things, obviously. The NBA Foundation has committed $300 million over the next 10 years um, for these types of issues, and, uh, and we're proud to be a part of it. Yeah, the NBA is, I think, uh, one of the sports leagues that I admire for all they do with NBA Cares, and, um, you know, they do so much uh, in the community. The NBA is also returning tonight amid uh, what we've been all experiencing in terms of the surge in the pandemic around the country. There's no bubble for this season, but what type of precautions are in place to protect the players from coming down with COVID? Well, there's not one bubble in place. There's 30 bubbles. Um, in place. And so um, mm -hmm. nine months ago today, the Hawks played their last game at State Farm Arena. Um, that's the longest break that I think these young players have had in their entire lives. Um, and so you can be sure that, that they are very excited to, to get back to be playing. But, but we are creating our own bubble um, in our arena. Um, the NBA, like you said, I think um, has, uh, has really risen to the occasion. Um, the amount of support um, that we're getting uh, around testing protocols and safety for our players, our coaches, um, that, you know, there might only be 30 players on the court, 15 from each side, but there's probably 100, uh, 100 plus people that are going to be in the building tonight to make sure that we can have a, a live game. And so we want to make sure that, um, that everyone is safe and that step by step, we're going to make sure that we welcome our fans back as safely as possible to State Farm Arena. Absolutely. So good luck tonight and in the season. Thad Chili, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.